Hi, uh, my name is uh, Isaiah Mbuka, and this is my wife Deborah. Together, we head Christ's Heart Ministries, a ministry that that are reaching out all over the world to young people and to old people, giving them back hope in God. You will find in this sermon nourishment, direction, correction, and challenge. We want to believe that your life can only get better with every exposure to the Word of God. And we thank you for tuning in. Please stay in the sermon, stay with us. You can even reach us, ask us any questions, or even require for prayer. Our lines are always open at 24 7 and they are willing to help you walk your journey with an encounter with from God. uganda to the rest of the world welcome to the christ head ministries broadcast with bishop isaiah mbuga don't forget to check us out at www.christhead.org and find us on social media platforms twitter facebook and instagram hallelujah Today I want to start on a subject which I have avoided for a very long time for personal reasons. But today I am well dealt with by God and I feel I'm in the right mind frame to address that issue. And that issue is called pride. Hey! Clap your hands to Jesus. So what is pride? How many of us have ever heard of the word pride? Okay, what, what is pride to you? Okay, pride, I've done some research. Is actually, one of the comments I got was, an unreasonable conceit of one's own superiority. Unreasonable conceit of one's superiority. In the following fields, number one, in talent. When a person feels they are more talented by another. In beauty. Ladies, ooh, ooh. In wealth. In accomplishments. In rank. These days, even prophets have ranks. We have major prophets and minor prophets. We have very accurate and some are accurate and low. We have great men of God and just men of God. We have Powerful men of God. And we also have boys of God. Right. Right. By the way, you're soon going to discover it has also eaten you up or it is on your the carpet who needs to be trying to find this way up your life. So, how does pride manifest? Pride Okay, there are two types of pride. Now, this is going to be a bit technical, but let's go for it. There are two types of pride. There is the pride which is called authentic pride. What a name. And hubristic pride. Hubu. H-U. Bristic. I tell you. Today I feel like I'm a professor. <laughs> hey, Okay. Hubristic pride and authentic pride. Authentic pride is not that bad. It's self-controlled. But uh, the hubristic type of pride is impulsive and aggressive. You know who you're talking to. Huh? Do you know who I am? Ever heard of that word before? Hey. Now, how does pride manifest in our lives? First of all, pride manifests in what some writers call lofty airs, feeling haire. Talk to me. Lofty. You want to appear above. 
You see, if it enters the choir, then the choir leader, when others are putting on, I don't know what material you call, what you call that material, chiffon. For them, they want to put on the other one, which is still black but glittering. Eh? Abio. They always want to stand out. Hmm? Number two, it presents itself in the distance. There are people who distance themselves. You've made it finally. You've gotten married. Now you have no time for. The other day I had some girl make a comment. And I'm thinking, excuse me. Don't call my daughter's house flies. Just because you got married, it doesn't give you a license to begin calling people names. Let me tell you. Why? Why is she saying that? She's insecure. And when she sees girls talking to her husband inside of the church, all of a sudden they become houseflies. But let's examine it. Can a housefly come on something that is not organically dead? So what are you telling us about your marriage? Let me leave that. So when you hear people saying, I've given them a distance. There are people you give distance to, right? All of us, we have people who have given distance. It could be. I'm not saying it is entirely. But the motivation to give space could be originating from pride. Sometimes being too reserved. You look for what to say and then you say, I looked at them, weighed them, and I decided to hold my peace. It sounds very nice and holy. But now we need to ask ourselves a simple question. What's the motivation? Motivation it's P R I D E. Can we take it a further? Can we take it a little bit further? Pride presents itself in the contempt of others, pulling people down all the time. Let me tell you your best is not my best. And God is not going to reward us according to how best we worked or how best we presented ourselves. But by how much effort we put in, God rewards effort, not results. I just said that that is a mind-blowing thing. God, tell your neighbor, God, God rewards effort and not... There are people who have results. There are people who will not even pray a single minute and will still perform miracles by gifting. You don't tell me that God will reward them the same way he would reward someone who is going to spend five hours praying and three days fasting. God is not a man to forget your labor. God, God rewards labor. You may, people may say you are not making results. But when you check yourself, you might be preaching to so many people and those people may not be following you and someone else comes and convinces them and makes them confess Christ. It doesn't mean that whoever has made more people confess Christ is the one. You understand? The one who closes the deal. Because the Bible says there is someone who plants, there is another one who waters and then God gives the increase. Praise the Lord. All of us here who got born again, there's someone who spoke to you about being born again before. And the person who 
preach to you the last time that would lead you in a prayer, but they had shaken you already all directions, and you are left with just a small tap root. When he came, he cut that tap root, and he took all the glory. He said, that me everywhere I go, people respond. And yeah, that's right, but remember, you are not entirely responsible for that kind of ministry. Praise the name of the Lord. Contempt of others. Someone sings, and then you say, ah, tattoo say. Ah, come them. Someone does their best to decorate and begin to say, Yeah, but Baba, we have a chin of big curtain. Munang. Someone sings their best and then you say, They are flirting. Number five, rude treatment of others. When you see people rudely treating others, it could be a sign that they are struggling with pride. Number six, excessive occupation with self. Self importance and status. Excessive what? Occupation of me, myself, and I. I then went. I laid hands, and after I laid hands, the Lord said to me that by this time, next year, this woman will have a child. And then I said to her, and after I said to her, the power of God came through me, and when I put my hand on her, then all of a sudden I had a vibration, and the Spirit of the Lord said to me that it is done. So I stood up and I walked out, and then the pastor announced like his own performed the miracle. Ever had that secret testimony? Ever had that secret testimony from a minister? I'm the one who performed that miracle. You see that guy driving that car? I'm the one we hoped him. If it was not I, then me, then I, then me, then I, then me. Excessive. If you cannot say a sentence without me, I, or myself, you're okay. But if everything that you do has to do with my I, me. Check for pride. Self-promotion. This is in ministry. Self-promotion. One time we went for a crusade somewhere and some guy says, uh, man of God, before you get on the pulpit, I want to preach. I, wa I want to, to greet the people. The guy greeted the people in 30 minutes. But let me tell you, out of everything he did, I had nothing. The guy, and that was just a confirmation that he is not my nature. How do you preach to people and they're not even hearing? You say, say amen. By the time say, and then say, say amen. Say amen. Say amen. And I ask people, what is he saying? I had nothing. I just kept on hearing, say amen, say amen. Say amen, say amen, say amen, say amen. Then afterwards, after he finished, he said he wants to greet people. If you're greeting people, use two minutes. He went for 30. Pride, remember, I told you, it's inconsiderate. It is possible that you have a ministry, but the way you're presenting this ministry, you're presenting it how? Pride. Set of importance. Without me, the choir cannot go on. Hey, 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 hey. Ha! I am the... I am the Bawa Pesi. Seraph importance. I am the only one who can see in the spirit. If I'm not around, no one can see. Pride. We live in a generation and in a place where God has poured out his spirit upon all. Self-promotion. Uh, when we meet as pastors, you find some pastors who, are, who want to show you that they are above. They don't listen to you. They don't even know where you're coming from. Then they begin to talk about things that you did 20 years ago. And for them, they've just happened. Therefore, they are the hottest. And they don't want anyone else to talk. There are some churches where it's only the pastor that talks. Because he's suffering from pride, 
he doesn't want to shoot anybody to be seen to be rising. And by the way, if you sit under a minister who is proud, your ministry will die. Because he will always be contempting you. When you see something in the spirit he hasn't seen, he will tell you that is not the Lord. But what does the Bible say? When we gather together, when we be gathered together, he that has a prophecy, let him bring it. He that has a hymn, let him bring it. He that has a psalm, let him bring it. He says, let things be done in order. But then you come to church, there is no testimony, there is no prophecy, there is no psalm, there is no spiritual song. And nobody is rising up. Anyone who tries to rise up, you tell him, it's not your time. You are like Eli in their lives. Go back to sleep, the Lord didn't speak to you. Go back to sleep, I did not call you. Go back to sleep, the, your time has not yet come. You want to prophesy? Yeah, you want to prophesy? Okay, you wait, I will tell you the right time. You want to go and start a church? I will tell you the right time. There are people who, ha- who, who told their pastors they want to go and start churches and the pastor told him, let me go and pray. And after a year, the pastor had not heard from God. Those are, those are issues of pride. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Ah, ah, ah. Now let's go. Ah. Uh, self pro. Why are you promoting yourself? So that you can come out where? When a proud person gives you money, they will announce it. Many people who live outside of this country carry a proud nature. They think that we who live here are foolish. If we are not foolish, we are thieves. Ever heard some relatives say? They call us thieves. Oh, we don't trust anybody. One girl, there's a girl who, who, who was single. She was telling me, pray for me to get a husband. And I told her, well, I have boys in church who are not mine. I said, no, 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 no. People in Uganda. I said, where did you come from? So if, if, you, if you being in, in, in outside of Uganda makes you holy, then it makes all of us who live in Uganda evil. That's pride. This is three years down the road. The sister is still single. But the last time she called me, I asked her, did God send you there? Because now I also had to put my gloves off. It's true we have people in this country who are thieves. We also have people who live out of this country who steal. But you saying that every Ugandan, like, you, like sometimes I hear some of these social people say, all pastors are evil. All pastors are fairy. <clears throat> so for me, I don't even have time to respond to such comments. I believe God will give me an opportunity. And when he brings me, you know, sometimes some, somebody first hit me with rotten eggs and they ended up on my desk one day. And they were in so much trouble and the spirit of God told me that this woman has been talking about you. And so she said, I'm so much in trouble. And I told her, yeah, but before I pray for you, am I a man of God? Yes, if you're not a man of God, I wouldn't be here, but you've been telling people I'm evil. Isn't it true? I'm sorry, a man of God. I told her, okay, I want you to do something very simple. I want you to go back and tell everybody you told that I'm not evil, then you come and I pray for you. Then she said, of a truth, I don't even know where some are. But why do people do that? Pride. When someone is better than you, all of a sudden he goes underwater. When someone is better than you, all of a sudden he's employing powers which are not godly. In someone is... Where is it coming from? Pride. So proud people don't listen to advice. Proud people never listen to advice. They cannot be advised. When a proud person wants to marry, they, they come to you when they've already made up their mind, they've set their debts, and there's nothing you're going to change. When you tell them, but he, say, Pastor, you're not spiritual. Me, God spoke. Listen, the Bible is very clear. 
The wisdom from above is first of all pure. Without any intention, you come to church merely to seek God. Full stop. You stand to pray merely for God's glory. Full stop. But when you get into dimensions of if I don't hold a microphone, I have not prayed. Okay? This thing is also in the prayer people. You know, if you're not the one to pray on a microphone, okay? then you don't pray. You think praying is praying on a microphone. By the way, through Jesus, if we are to follow Jesus' teaching, the Bible says when you want to pray, enter your house, close the door. That's a standard. I'm not hearing any men in the house this morning. How are you? Touch your neighbor and say, are you okay? We want... And by the way, proud people and attention go together. You want to hurt a proud person? Ignore them. It will be more painful than hitting them with a club on the head. And sometimes when people tell you, I am hurt, I am hurt. They are not hurt. It's their pride which is hurt. You refuse to recognize them. I, when a proud person has just come from a saloon or has bought a new shoe and you say nothing, they can walk in front of you eight times. They will shake it. They will cross their legs to show you that it's still carrying the Kalebo, there is the Kastika down here of the price. And then if it's here, they'll keep touching it and bring it to the front to show you. But at the same time, you, you may not be seeing anything new. Then they'll go to the toilet and cry or go back to the saloon and remove it. Proud people think they are always different. I see it every morning when I'm driving. You drive, you keep in the lane, then someone with a smaller car, half dead, thinks they are more in a hurry. Then they create a second lane. The cars which are coming from the opposite direction can't pass. Then they are acting like they are not responsible. So most of the time I have to get out of my car and remove the traffic grid. But even when you're doing that, a proud person feels like they are more entitled to go. They overtake you only to stop to buy pieces of Nile, fried Nile patch. And, and they're saying, this guy thought he was speeding and he's going up country. There is, we have a lot of pride even in the driving sector. We have a lot of pride even in church. We have a lot of pride even in our families. You know, when you're going to do a wedding, they tell you, do a wedding, eh, that will break eh. Records. It has to be better than those people. Those people, they are not. You heard of those things before. When the word of God says this is how something should be done, pride tells you, no, you, you can. Hmm? Yeah, you can alter it a bit, you can create your own way. When the word of God says 
this is the way, you, you say no. I'm not going to do this. Pride can never come under authority. Of the word or of any form of leadership. Pride can never concede. A proud person will never tell you, I don't know. They would rather mess it up and then cover it up. But what's the problem? I don't, they cannot admit, I don't know. When proud persons buy phones that they can't even operate, they would rather spend the entire night figuring how to fit in a SIM card than to ask for help. How do I tell that you're proud when you don't read the owner's manual? Ask your neighbor, do you know, do you know those blue papers they insert in a new product? It's called an owner's manual. You need to read it. But a proud person doesn't read. They already think, I know. I know everything. Talk to me. Proud person thinks that for them, they will be excused. When a proud person is telling you why they don't give fast fruit, you'll be convinced. When a proud person comes under financial attack because of breaking financial principles. This broadcast was made possible by the gracious giving of Christ Head Churches International. You win with Jesus.